Hey guys, Joe here. On my way to work right now, and I'm doing a review today that I've been wanting to do for a while, just haven't had the time to or the inclination to. I've been dealing with a lot of other crap in my life. So I'm on my way, and when I get there, it will be in a really cool car, and we should be there in just about. Here we are, ZL1 time, baby. Now, I've never driven a ZL1 before. I will say right off the bat that I do like the clutch better than in the standard car. Now, I guess that is pretty much to be expected and because it makes more power maybe, or for some reason, the clutch feels much more linear than it does in the standard Camaros. Now, it could also just be because I'm biased to my Mustang's clutch and my clutch for some reason feels like it's slightly more put together, but personal preference. Although I really like the definitive action of this transmission. I think my Mustang's louder. But this has a lot more torque and a lot more power. About 160 more horsepower. When it's on the right fuel, I don't know what fuel's in here. It should be on 93 because that's our rule for high performance vehicles. I really like the seats. They're very supportive for my side. I'm a bigger dude, so they're definitely for that. Uh, the steering wheel feels nice. It has that Alcantara stuff all over it, which I really appreciate. I think it's a nice touch. Let's go for a little bit of a pull. Sounds really good when you get on it a little bit. You hear a little bit of supercharger, but not too much. You don't want to hear too much in your car. The clutch is still a little bit light for my taste. I'm not sure if that's all the ZL1s or just this particular one. I've moved to Z28 before and that clutch felt a little bit stiffer. I don't know, I just like a little bit more effort in my pedal. Now some people prefer just like a hey, lift it and go kind of a pedal, but I like to know exactly where my pickup is and possibly if I had a car like this and I drove it every day, I'd probably learn where the correct pickup point is and it wouldn't be a problem. So it sounds really nice at idle. It's just your standard 6.2 liter with a big ass supercharger on it. So it's not like a completely different block that's in the Shelby. Which is a good thing and it's a bad thing at the same time because the 5.8 liter that's in the Shelby GT500s, that's only in the GT500s. The LSA that's in here is the same engine that's in the Cadillac CTS-V, however, it makes a little less power in that application. I don't know if it's routing of the exhaust or they did that on purpose, which is usually what happens. They dumb down each version of the engine to try to justify the ZR1 at the time having the biggest output. However, in daily driving circumstances, you're not gonna notice that much of a difference. Just, I really like the gear selector shifter if you want to call it that it's very precise very short throws this one being used i'm not 100 percent if it's the factory shifter in here but if it's not it's a really good one gearing on this car is more for top end speed than it is for straight line acceleration and that's fine my gt track pack goes from zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds but it also revs out in first gear at like 20 miles an hour. And come on, that's useless, man. So short trip, pulling back in now. I don't want to beat on this car. I don't want to get yelled at for driving it too much. Granted, I could. It's not like anybody's going to really yell at me, but I don't like to abuse a car. A car so in here is actually one of my most favorite parts of this entire vehicle, believe it or not. It corrected a lot of the issues I had in that 2016, or excuse me, the 2015 that I brought back. Now this one's a 2013, so it's very similar. However, a lot of little touches make it feel so much more premium in here. The seat fabrics are really nice. The door panels, the fact that I don't know how well you can see that very reflective they're still hard plastic but since they're painted in a metallic they look much more premium the dashboard has alcantara up here this is really weird because i'm filming in 60 frames per second but yeah 
it has Alcantara up here. You have Alcantara on the steering wheel. I like the heads up display on this one a little bit better than on the new cars because it actually has a rev gauge instead of just a linear rev counter. Call me old school, but I prefer that. Full complement of standard luxury features because this is the ZL1, not the Z28. The Z28 had far less luxury features in it. However, it was more of a track-focused car. This is a direct competitor to the GT500 in that it is a luxury car with tons of power. I know saying it's a luxury car is a little bit weird to say, but it's more of a cruiser than it is a track monster. You have the 1LEs and the Z28s for those. So you have your standard navigation system in here. It's exactly the same as that 15 I showed you. However, you do have your complement of extra gauges. You know, you've got your oil pressure and your oil temp as well as your, um, pardon me, your supercharger gauge as well as your battery and voltmeter. Now, from this position, you see the weird thing there? This knob interferes with your view of the oil pressure gauge. So, yeah, you're not always going to be able to read that from down there. This vehicle is currently in sport mode. This vehicle has touring mode and sport plus or plus sport. Uh, I would always leave it in sport if it was my vehicle, personal preference. It's got the upgraded Boston acoustics sound system and it sounds pretty good. It's comparable to the one, and I know this is gonna be the stupidest thing I've said today, but it sounds like the system in my father's Chrysler 200. Bear with me as I explain that statement. My father's Chrysler 200, while it is a Chrysler 200, has the Boston acoustic sound system in it. And Chrysler has always done stereos well. I'm not sure if it's to hide the sound of the rest of the car exploding, but they've always been very good sounding systems, so. Now, is it weird that this is my favorite part of any sixth, sixth gen Camaro? or fifth gen Camaro is the frameless mirror. I actually wanna to try to get one of these for my Mustang. Obviously I can't get one that has OnStar, but I wanna get one of these for my Mustang. That's bizarre that that's my favorite part on this car. Again, visibility is not that great, but it doesn't have to be, to be absolutely honest with you, because it's a badass Camaro. Enough said. Like so here we go, this is the outside of the 2013 Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. This one is finished out in the bright ass red. That's what I call it, bright ass red. You can argue with me about that if you want some other time. But this one has a bit of an interesting story to it. Okay, why do we have this car for the third time? I will tell you. Now we originally sold this vehicle. We sold it to a gentleman who had to have a ZL1, had to have it, had to have it, bought it brand new, had to have it. Just after he bought it, he found out he was having kids. Obviously, a Chevy Camaro ZL1 with 580 horsepower is not conducive for kids. So he traded it in. Then we sold it again to another person, and that gentleman decided he wanted something else as well. I think he went to an SUV as well. So now it's back again. Somewhere along the line is when those wheels got switched out. Not sure when, but it currently has the wrong wheels on it. Is that a detriment to the car? Yeah. Yeah, it actually is. Uh, I, I have to be honest with you guys that if it was me looking at this vehicle, I would honestly have a hard time buying it with those wheels on it mainly because I know that the replacement cost for factory ZL1 wheels is quite expensive. So walking up to the vehicle, the first thing, and I'm sure all you guys are noticing it, so I'm just gonna get the elephant out of the room because he's big, ugly, and he's putting a dent in the floor, is those are SS wheels. It does not have the correct wheels on it, and that's going back to the story I told you about how this vehicle came to be in our possession for a third time at least they're 20 inch wheels they didn't put basic wheels on it it doesn't have the super chunky base rs 18s or anything like that so it doesn't look terrible however from the side it kind of looks just like a camaro ss 
no sunroof because no car with that much power should ever have one coming around it obviously it's in really good shape otherwise we wouldn't be keeping it we would auction it off yeah it's a beautiful car it's almost worthy of being a daily driver I personally would take the Camaro script off and just leave it off or replace it with ZL1 scripting much the same amount of room back here as there was in the 2016 that I showed you however I think this area from this piece of weather stripping to the latch is actually deeper because the car is a little bit longer so you can get a slightly longer bag in the back thank you very much to Manassas Chevrolet all right so under the hood here you have your LSA supercharged 6.2 liter V8 Makes 580 horsepower, 500 and blah, blah, foot-pounds of torque. All of a sudden, I lost the number out of my brain. However, it's more than enough. This vehicle is more than capable of keeping up with the Shelby up into about 140 miles an hour, which is about where the Shelby will start to pull away due to the extra 82 horsepower. Has the functional ram air hood, which brings the air directly down right into the radiator area so that it can cool down everything again like I said it's the root style supercharger it's not centrifugal centrifugal would be hanging off one side of the motor or the other being driven by the belt directly instead of off a pulley and going directly into the motor thank you for having a gas strut Chevrolet so there you go my first review at the new dealership in a vehicle that they own now i didn't go crazy with the car i didn't beat the crap out of it and i have no intentions to i forgot my tripod i wanted to do a couple of, i forgot my tripod i wanted to do a couple of drive-bys and i'm going to start doing that with other vehicles but again i didn't want to do it with this car because i don't want my bosses to freak out i know it's a stupid thing to worry about but i've only been here a month but you can't just walk in someplace and go, hey, man, I'm going to take your 600 horsepower car and beat the snot out of it. So, yeah, uh, that's about it. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any comments, put them down below. That's about it. Please subscribe if you haven't. Like the video if you haven't. Leave me a comment if you haven't. I know I've done a few Camaros now, but at least they've all been different trims, different years, different models, as well as hopefully just giving you an idea on what to, what you're going to see in the different trims and what you're going to see in the different models. So, hey guys, Excedrin, if you guys want to sponsor me, I'd be happy to have you. Sell time. learned that I can't talk during Excel time because the camera tends to pick up all the noise of the motor. Actually, it's an engine, kids. Motors are electric.